welcome. This is lesson 8.2 on perpendicular lines. And before we go too much further, let's just review what a perpendicular line is. In this case, perpendicular lines are lines that meet at what we call a 90 degree angle. All right. And inside this little corner here, any one of these four corners, you will find a small uh, box which represents the fact that it is a 90 degree angle. Now this is helpful if you're a lousy drawer. Okay, but this little symbol right here means that this here angle between here and here is 90 degrees. So this is a perpendicular pair of lines. Okay, now if you want to write down how they're perpendicular, what you have to do is you have to give them some labels. So we'll just call this A, and we'll call this B, call this C, and we'll call this D. And what we're going to say is that AB, that's one line from A to B, line segment AB is perpendicular. Now, there's no perpendicular sign here for me to use, so I have to create one. Oops, that's the wrong one. Okay, so you take two lines. One of them is goes like this, and the other one goes up. It's like an upside down capital T. Okay, and once you have that, then you can put in CD. And what this is saying is that line AB, right here, is perpendicular to line CD, line segment. Now, what this means is they meet at 90 degrees. Now, when you're doing this, you must put in this little box here, okay? You must put in the fact that this is a, a 90 degree angle. Now, that helps me because some of you may not be such a great drawer, right? And if it's a quick thing, and that's what you've drawn, and I'm not too worried about, con about construction, without this, that's clearly not 90 degrees. With it, what I know is you're a terrible drawer, but you meant it to be 90 degrees. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. So students should be able to recognize perpendicular lines, which we know about that, but now we have to go on to the other side, which is constructing them. So before we begin, you're going to need a ruler and a compass, and you're going to need a couple of extra sheets of paper so that you can practice. Okay, now what does a rectangle look like? Well, we know that rectangles are basically four sided figures, and they have these two sides right here are parallel, and those two sides right there are parallel. But in order to prove that it's a rectangle, not only do these have to be parallel, but these angles in the corner must also be 90 degrees because you can get what is called a parallelogram. And I think I can pull one up here, right? Now, in a parallelogram right here, this here line is parallel to that line, and this line is parallel to that line. So if we just said it had two sets of parallel lines, we would be calling this a rectangle, which is clearly not. So you have to make sure you also include that it has four 90 degrees. Now, the one of, the, of the two of these things, you actually could eliminate the pairs of, of the two pairs of parallel lines and just say that a rectangle has four 90 degrees uh, angles. Because if you do this, the four 90 degree angles will cause it to have to have a perpendicular, sorry, parallel lines here. Okay. So where have we seen parallel lines? Well, the sides of doorways, desktops, buildings—they're all over the place. Now, how can you construct a parallel line? Well, a perpendicular line. Well, the most easiest way is to construct using a protractor and a 90 degrees on each side. So I'm just going to grab it and do it real quickly here. First off, you have to draw yourself a line across here. Okay. And then you take your protractor. Oops. Grabbing it. Grab your protractor, bring it down. Doesn't, doesn't like to move some days. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and place this on here, but I have to do one thing first. I've got to mark on the line where I want to put the perpendicular line. Okay, so I'm going to take and put a little mark there. It didn't show it very well. Maybe I'll overdo it. There you go. All right. Now, when you move your protractor into place, make sure that this is at that crosshair, like the sight of a gun, is actually right on where those two lines intersect. And take your pencil. And very lightly, up here, where it says 90 degrees, you make a mark. Right. Now, this program is not the greatest, but if you take a look at this one here and this one here, they should be meeting at 90 degrees. Now, like I said, the program doesn't allow me always to be perfect, but you can see that I'm almost perfect. With a different protractor on a piece of paper, you'll have no trouble getting exactly 90. Now, the last thing I have to do is show everybody that this is, in fact, a 90 degree angle by putting in a perpendicular sign. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. All right, make a line, put a mark on the line, put your protractor on that mark, make a mark above it, move your protractor, and join the two lines. And you end up getting a 90 degree or a perpendicular line. 
Now, what happens though if you don't have a protractor? What if you only had a compass and a ruler with no uh, numbers on them? Well, there's two ways of doing this. You could take a piece of paper and you could draw the line on it, and then you could fold the piece of paper so that this B would match up with this A, and then you could put your nut your uh, down the middle of it, after you folded it, you'd have the crease, right? Now, if you put A right on top of B here, this will be a 90 degree angle, right here, right? But what if you can't fold it? Well, there are other methods to use, okay? We could use a Myra, right? A Myra is uh, those, those red things that we were using before, a piece of plastic where you can look through, right? And, you know, you put the Myra here, there's two crooked sides, and join it up, and you would look through it until the two lines lined up, and then put your line down here, and it would also be perpendicular. The Myra, though, is not very accurate, okay? The easiest way to do it is real simple, and let's go over how it's done so that you can remember and pay attention to this and all that stuff. Okay, first off, if you only had a compass, first off, draw your, your line AB, okay? Now, here's where it gets real simple. All you need to do is put your compass on the line in two places and draw two circles, all right? The distance is only important so that you have this center in here. It's like a Venn diagram, okay? You're just making a Venn diagram, but you have to put the point of the compass on the two, on the line. Now, once you have this circle drawn, you move it over and draw that circle. Now, all you have to do now is join from here down to there, and you end up getting a perpendicular line, all right? So review and watch, do that again if you're having any difficulties. So let me do it with you once. Okay, so we have to take our compass, and it doesn't matter uh, how big you make it, but you want to make it, you know, so that it's not too overly huge, all right? Put it here on the line, all right, and then draw your circle, and move it over somewhere close to the line here. Draw your circle, and then you're done with your compass. Then grab your ruler and draw a line from here straight down to there. And now you have yourself a perfect 90 degree angle right there. Okay? Now, you can also make the lines longer. They don't have to be necessarily from here, you know, right to there. You can actually take this one and make it longer. And sometimes that's, that's, that's an advantage. Okay? Now, later on, we're going to learn how to make this into a perpendicular bisector, but that's in our next lesson. So we don't have to worry about this just yet. So this is how you draw a perpendicular line. Simple as that. Okay? Let's go on to the next one. It says, in the space below, draw a rectangle with your compass and straight edge. No measuring in millimeters or centimeters is allowed. So what I'd like you to do is draw a line down across the bottom here. And this is going to be the bottom of your rectangle. Make it fairly long because you're going to have to make circles on both sides. All right? Now, what I want you to do is draw a rectangle here. Now, that means you have to make a perpendicular line here and a perpendicular line over here somewhere. So. Pause the recording and see if you can make your two perpendicular lines. All right, so now you need to have your compass. And again, bring your compass down. Put it over here somewhere. Remember, you only need to have this big enough to overlap. So I'm going to take this, draw my circle. I'm going to move it over. Doesn't really matter where, how far over it goes. And then I'm going to go over here and do exactly the same thing. All right. Actually, I'll put that there. Draw the circle. And put this over here. And draw the circle. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and make a line, which divides this up perfectly with my ruler and this. Now, I'm not using a ruler here, but you would grab your ruler, and you'd put your ruler down here. And uh, I can't remember how this works. this one. There we go. All right, so you put your ruler here, line up your two things, and zoom. Bring it over here to the same, to the other side, same thing, and you'll take this, and you'd line it up perfect here. Now, the next thing to do is to take and make a, a rectangle. Now, to make a rectangle, you notice that before, when we were doing parallel lines, we used two circles, and we just joined the tops. Well, because we didn't change the distance of our radius for any one of these circles, I can simply go up here, and join the top of these right across. And I now have a rectangle, which has your 90 degree angles right here. Not really good that way. Here, here, and here. 
Okay, so there's my rectangle. Maybe if I draw it in here and fill it, you'll, you'll be able to see it a little bit easier. So here's what it would be right in there, and I'll fill it, and there you go. So there's your rectangle. Okay, now you may have to do this, but you're definitely going to have to be able to draw lines which are perpendicular, all right? So regardless of what happens, you have to be able to draw a perpendicular line using your compass, and you also have to be able to use, do a perpendicular line using your protractor, which is down here. So these are the new two things you have to practice for your next lesson, okay? And that takes, I believe, that wraps up this lesson. So start page 305, 13456, and we'll see you in the next lesson.